What's growing on Plan Army? Jacob here, and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial in Photoshop about text. So I'll be showing you how to manipulate 2D text in Photoshop. And I say 2D because we're not going to be working with the 3D feature yet, but you actually can with these things that I'll, that I'll be showing you make the text look 3D even though it's technically not. Alright, so to show you the effect, I'll just open up a new 800 by 800 um, white background and I'm just gonna create a vignette look so that it creates a cool background for the text so I'm just gonna create the gradient alright that looks good another way you can create this vignette is once you have these two colors selected it could be like a gray and a black so that it looks good like this you can go to filter lens correction and go over here to custom and then you can change the vignette but I'm not going to be doing that because I think the gradient the radial this has to be radial by the way select radial gradient when you do this and I think that's a simple way alright but let's start the text okay so I'm just gonna click here and type something in like autotroph okay I'm just gonna control T and scale this up You can hold shift to keep the scale the same when you're scaling things up and down. Um, to create this, to make it bounce more from the background, I'm going to select the text and make it a darker. Actually, I'll just make it black. Alright, so we have this nice looking text. I used a font called... Um, I believe Harabara. You can get that at defont.com. They have lots of cool fonts there, and it's just great because they're all free, and they look nice. Um, all right. So what we're going to be doing is going through the blending options. So right-click on your text layer and click blending options. All right. So we'll start out with bevel and emboss. Go ahead and click that and you can see what it does here. It creates it this is the one that makes it look 3D when it's really not. So if you want to create 3D text but don't actually want to use 3D layers because that can be complicated, you can just use the bevel and emboss and it looks nice. This is inner bevel. There's outer bevel, emboss, pillow emboss, and stroke emboss. So you guys can go ahead and just mess around with all those and there's depth so that really makes it 3D when you increase the depth. There's up and down. You can increase the size of the bevel. It, look, it looks freaky when you make it too big, but um, you can soften the bevel. It just makes it like blurry. Um, you can change the angle that it's at. The contour, you can go in and edit. And you can change the highlight and shadow mode. And what this is. Uh, right now it's white and that's why there's white up here but say you had you wanted to create the impression there was a green light showing onto it you could click this and make it green and now the highlights are green and you can do the same with the shadow and change that to whatever color you want now the shadows are red because I just changed it to that so I'm just gonna click that off um yeah alright next stroke stroke is just going around your text with a brush so it's pretty basic you can either go on the inside the outside or the center and it's just pretty basic you can increase the size you can increase the or you can change the color of the stroke brush that you're gonna make and it's just an easy way to create like an outline around your text make it pop from the background and of course you can change the blend mode at any time to lots of different things and you can change the fill type to a gradient or pattern and I'll show you these patterns in one second when we get down to pattern overlay. So I'll click that off and we'll do inner shadow. Inner shadow, um, to show you what it does, I'm going to change the text to a different color because the shadow would normally be black. So I'm going to change the color to green. Make it a little softer. Okay, so go back into blending options and go to inner shadow. Now you can see here, this creates the impression that the text is like dug into the background because it creates a shadow on the inside, which makes it look like there's depth to it. And you can increase the distance 
But once you go too far, it looks like it's not in. But like that, it looks like the text is engraved into the background that I created. You increase the choke and the size. Um, you can, of course, change the blend mode, as always, and the color of the shadow itself. See, now you can see there's like a red tint there when I did that. But usually for this, you're going to want black, and it'll create a nice um, shadow looking. Uh, you can change the angle that, that this is at so it looks engraved from a different angle. Uh, it, it looks best at like 90 degrees or like 120, something like that, I think. Uh, and you can, just like you could change the contours up here, you can change the contour by dragging this around like this. Okay, so now we'll go into Inner Glow. Inner Glow is cool because it creates a simple glow effect. So, all, you can just change this to, well, of course, you can change it to any blend mode, whatever you need for your project. And then you can change the color to, you're probably not going to want like tan. That's pretty ugly color. You can use, well, I'm going to change the text back to a black color for this. So, we'll set it to black. Go into blending options. Okay, and we'll go to Inner Glow. I'm going to change the glow to a nice green color. So it has like this neon green color on the outside. I'm going to change the blend mode to normal, increase the opacity, and now I'm going to change the size. And there you can see a nice Inner Glow neon looking effect. Uh, you can also go do an Inner Glow from the center. But I mean, it still looks nice. But you can you can use that for different things. I think the edge is a little bit nicer, and you can change the precise or softer technique. And just like before, you can change the contour over here. The satin effect. This is interesting. See, you can. Well, if you're if you have black text, you're not going to want black for the satin. So change it to something like red, and change it to normal. And you can see here that there's this kind of like wispy cloud like thing going on inside of the text. Now what this is, it's like it creates a um, duplicate of the text and kind of morphs it at the angle that you want. So you can fill it inside. And that can create a pretty cool looking thing. And you can increase the size and the distance. So it can look, you can really just mess around with this and figure that stuff out yourself. All right, color overlay. This one's pretty basic. You can just choose a color. I don't know, green, blue, purple, whatever. Uh, and you can increase or decrease the opacity as well as change the blend mode. Gradient overlay. Now this is a little bit more creative. You can change the blend mode just as you can with other with all the other effects. You can change the opacity, and now you can use a gradient. So I can choose this rainbow gradient. Do something like that. And you can, of course, change it because it's a gradient to linear, radial, angle, reflected, and diamond. And you can mess around with the settings here, change the scale to make this look really nice. And you can reverse it and whatever and change the angle. So this is a nice feature. All right, now to pattern overlay. This one's probably not used as much, but it can actually be really cool. So to show you how to do this, well, first, there's a few presets that you can use uh, to overlay your text with a pattern. Now, the use of this is if you don't want a solid color to overlay your text, but you want like an image to overlay your text. So I'm just going to create a new little document over here. And with my brush tool, actually, I'm going to make this background. Just double click on the background to unlock it. Change the opacity to zero so it's transparent. And I'm going to select a green foreground color and a blue background color. Now I'm going to go into my brush settings and here I've selected shape dynamics, scattering and color dynamics and changed the um, the settings a little bit. And I, I made a tutorial about this stuff earlier so if you don't know what I'm talking about go back and watch this and then come back but uh, I've just selected these and messed with these a little bit and I'll draw in here it'll create this cool rainbow bubbly thing. 
Now that's a nice pattern that you might want to put on top of your text. So go to Edit, Define Pattern. Name this, I don't know, Bubbles. Hit OK. Now go back into this, Blending Options, and go back to Pattern Overlay. Now here, you'll find the one that you just created. Right here. And you can scale it, change the opacity, change the blending mode just like you could before. And it's cool because you can overlay images into your text and create cool designs inside of your text like this. Alright, now we'll go on to Outer Glow. Outer Glow is just like Inner Glow except it's on the outside obviously because it's Outer Glow and not Inner. I'm not going to go through all of these because it's the exact same options as the Inner Glow but it's just on the outside. Alright, and the last option in the blending options is Drop Shadow. Now this is used as you can as you would expect to create a shadow behind the text. And this can create a 3D effect. It gives the picture depth rather than just the text. You can see if you increase the distance of the shadow, it really looks like the uh text is like above the background. So that can be really cool and you can change the color of the shadow like this, the angle that it comes off of the spread, the size, that blurs it, um, and the contour. Um, Alright guys, that's about it for the te text blending options. Um, I'm going to make a tutorial about how to make 3D text soon, and you can find that up here, the 3D option. Alright, so thanks for watching this quick tutorial, and I'll see you next